Yo, I'm back with another episode. I keep saying I'm back, but I'll be honest, I never left. I've still been sitting in the same spot next to my microphone. So every time I keep saying, and we're back, I never left. I've always been here. No, seriously. All right, so I'm like the only one here today because I ain't find nobody to do this shit with on a Monday night. Had a pretty rough Monday. Usually Mondays suck. Is that... That's universal, obviously. I hope everybody else's Monday didn't suck. Um, But I don't know what kind of spurred me to get up here and kind of do this thing myself. Kind of just to go over some of the same shit that we've been talking about on the previous podcast. But I guess I got a couple other things that I'd like to touch base on. Um, So, like, I have been telling everybody about... um, trying to publish a book in the next couple months. I'm still in the editing process right now. I got a guy who's working on it with me. So that's coming along nicely, I guess. Um, I got to hire somebody to design the interior, exterior of a book. I got to fucking put it on a Kindle store. I got, like, there's so much shit that goes into making a goddamn book. I'm like, fuck me, dude. Wish I could just hire somebody to do that. But then it's like... I don't trust nobody, you know? I don't know if that's, like, an issue, but in in a sense, it's, like, I guess not trusting people in the industry, any industry, you know, you can get fucked over, you know? So I'd like to think that I'm capable at figuring this out right now. It's not to say that in the future I can't hire people to do this shit for me because, obviously, with the second book I'm working on called The Hierarchy of Habits, which is... Uh, a more basic self by or sorry a step by step self help book i could definitely like find a literary agent to help me out with that um for the book that i'm putting out right now it's more of a a philosophical journey there is a lot of how do i put it like inspirational stuff to it you know It's a collection of parables and essays that I had written during my time in recovery from all of my addictions and also, hell, even like some recent months too. So obviously like I'm still still in recovery. I don't think you ever leave recovery because, you know, eight years of just like completely destroying your body and your brain and your, your soul and you got to make up for that. And I think even when I'm fully healed, and that that's an ambiguous thing to say too. What does fully healed even mean? Like I can say like fully forgiven, you know, cause I ain't perfect. Like I'm still working on that shit. So, you know, I don't think I'll ever not be in recovery. And I think that's okay because it gives me a lot of insight and it gives me a lot of things that I need to work on each and every day, you know, to be a better person. And that's like the whole point of the podcast and everything that I write. So that's kind of why I wanted to come on here tonight and just start talking about some of the things that I'm trying to do with the podcast. Of course, I'm bringing on people that are chasing their dreams or they're chasing some type of health and fitness route or well-being, wellness, like just an umbrella term. Like you're just trying to live a better life. That's not even an umbrella term. An umbrella term for what I'm trying to do is love, you know, because, damn, we need some more of that shit out here. I ain't playing right now. This is fucked. Holy shit. I'm not even trying to be pessimistic right now because, fuck, you know, like, damn. My mom always say, says, like, I've become, like, more cynical over time i don't fucking blame her i don't blame anyone everyone says that shit i'm trying trying real hard to just like side with love you know but damn everything i write and do is like i gotta put more love out into the world but i had to learn to love myself but like that's the goal you know like sometimes i blurt some shit out it's like pretty cynical you know but damn can you blame me like i ain't trying to like bring up any specific events that have happened recently because we haven't really we haven't really got to a point where i'm gonna start talking about that shit you know i'm trying to make a platform for people to come and listen to 
take the edge off, maybe hear a couple of things that me and my guests say on the podcast and be like, you know what? I am going to go work out. Or you know what? Like, I'm going to make dinner tonight instead of order out. I'm not going to watch TV. I'm going to pick up a book. I'm going to put my phone down because I've been staring at it all fucking day. I'm just going to start being happy. I want to spur people to start being more healthy. I want you to have hope. I want to I want to remind people that it is possible, you know, because I know what it's like to not have hope. It fucking sucks. And sometimes there ain't anybody there to pick you up. Hold on one sec. Had some fucking water there, bud. I got a cup of coffee sitting next to me, but... I mean, I guess it wouldn't be feel free if I didn't take a sip of this fucking coffee right now. It's like 9.45 at night. I'm drinking coffee because I'm like, shit, I got to do this podcast and then I'm going to try and write a little bit and then I'm going to go to bed. But shit, I was fucking gassed. I was playing basketball all day. That's probably like one of the highlights of my week is being able to play basketball. You know, it's just something that you get to go out there and do. All right. Enough getting, like, off topic. So, basically, I'm here to tell everybody that what the podcast was really about. And also, what else I'm trying to do with it. I am trying to push the whole love, wellness, and well-being thing. Push the book sales. Just me in general as, like, an entity. There's that. And, damn, people, people might take this as a joke. I don't really give a fuck at this point. But... On my other podcast that I did two years ago that they weren't too professional and I didn't really take the time to make them professional. It's not to say they weren't good because I had my buddy on who's super intelligent dude, probably one of my best friends, um, but I just didn't take the time to make it a good podcast. And on that podcast as a joke, I was just like, yeah, John Cerrone, 2028 for president. You know, that's not a fucking joke. But then I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, fuck, that's like six years away. So I'm like, all right, I was trying to run for president in 2028 as just like a flex. I'm like, I'm going to win this like right at the age of 35 and and prove to the world that you don't need to be some old, stupid fuck to win the presidential election in America or any country for that matter. Because, God, it's just embarrassing watching what's going on. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Anyway, I was thinking of John Cerrone 2032. I'm like, all right, that's 10 years. I'll be 39. That'll still be the youngest president ever elected. And I get four more years to just learn and and grow into a better individual, which is like, you know, four more years of learning. Like, fuck it, you know. And I had some people making comments. They laugh and they chuckle. Mostly it's like my family, maybe some aunts and uncles. They don't take me seriously. I don't blame them, but fuck them when I say this. They're like, yeah, you couldn't be president. Like, I won't vote for you. And I'm like, really? Like, your entire generation is is so fucking uneducated. You're going to stand there and tell me that I don't deserve to be president after, like, everything we've been through for the entirety of my life. I'm 29 years old. I've never voted before, and people give me shit for that. They're like, oh, it's your fucking job. You got to vote. You got to get out there. Yeah, I'm not a fucking idiot. These people suck. God. My main thing about coming into the presidential election is that I'm trying to bring this world into an age of science, okay? I'm really just sick of the politics and the media and the religion, Those three things. You know what? I'm not saying get rid of them. Obviously, you can't get rid of them. But stop focusing on them. They're fucking bad. I don't care if people are like, there's good media. Yeah, and there's bad media. Well, there's good politics. There's bad politics, all right? There's good religion. Yeah, there's good things to learn about religion. But to the extent that everybody is blowing these things out of proportion, it's actually ruining the things that we should be worrying about, like the educational system. Uh, pollution, saving the planet, just like coming together as like one cohesive unit of a species because we, we just like desire to be segregated and to hate each other. And 
God, it just makes me sick. But I'm not here to get mad. You know, that's not the point of the podcast tonight. I'm just letting you know that the podcast will probably be more than just got to chase your dreams, bringing on people to talk about being healthier and all that good stuff. Like, I am going to throw a little bit of my own agenda on here because, fuck, I got to start somewhere, you know. And if I'm on a 10-year plan right now, that means I got to start putting in the work right now if I'm going to win the presidential election. And, yeah, you should definitely, like, take that seriously. <clears throat> or not, Morty. Anyway, I was thinking of reading something that I had written, you know, because I think some of my people out there that are listening – and shit, I even told somebody at the gym tonight, like, what the book is about that I'm writing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I said, it's more of a philosophical um, journey of, like, inspiration and stuff. It's really just, like, my raw thoughts through, like, recovery. Because it wasn't just, like, me getting healthy. It was, like, I have to get healthy so I can chase my dreams. And that, like, comes up throughout the book a lot. It's only 100 pages long. It's really like short parables and stuff. Like some some little essays and stuff are only like 200 words, 300 words, not even. you know. So you can get through a couple of them pretty quick. You can put the book down, go do something else. You can read the book in one go if you want. I want people to like use it as like something they keep around. Maybe use a highlighter, write some sticky notes. Like find a little truth in this book to take it. Man, if you read the whole book and there's just one sentence that sticks out to you and it, like, makes you into a better person or it helps you, like, achieve a healthier way of life, that's all I'm fucking asking for. That's it. Like, I ain't – that's all I really want. That's all I really – I just really want everyone to start, like, living their best life because I'm sick of seeing rain clouds over everyone's head, you know? Like, if anybody's going to have rain clouds over their heads, like, just put it on me, you know? Like, I did it for so many years. Like, I'd rather everyone else be happy and, like, me be sad. Like, I'll take one for the team. I don't think that's going to work, though. That's not how love works. So I'm just going to keep trying to help people, obviously. But anyway, so the book is The Philosophical Journey. I do have something written down today that's not in the book, but... um. It might give you a little insight on what you might find in the book. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to fucking read it, you know. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Okay. <clears throat> I'm tired of my dreams not meaning anything to me. I'm tired of waking up, living a life that doesn't inspire me for the sake of survival, then coming home to an empty promise. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll chase my dreams. I just have to get through today. This week is too busy. Maybe next week I'll have more energy. Maybe next time. Maybe next life. Maybe. Maybe now is the perfect time to tear me apart. Leave nothing but a fresh soul ready to go. Ready to learn, try, fail, and grow. There's only so much wishing you can do before you need to turn your hope into action. Facts. Find the courage to start making moves. Finding grooves. Doing what you actually came here to do. I don't care how tired you think you may be for every second you scroll your phone or watch TV. It could be the perfect moment to be a better you and chase your dreams. Hell, it'd be the perfect moment to do anything even remotely healthy. Laziness sneaks up on us so stealthily in the 21st century. Technology holding us prisoner like some digital penitentiary. Sensory overload of stimulus overworks our souls to nothing more than a fragmented fleeting memory. Remember me? The words my true soul said to my addictive heathen of a self. Eight years of death and numbing agents couldn't keep me down. I felt every tear fall and hit the earth. Now when I sweat, I overwork my body. Be ready for this hurt, this pain. Working when I'm too tired to. Grind because I have to. Crash through the slim fabric of the reality sewn together by false hope and fake things. Nothing on this planet will ever come close to making me feel like my motherfucking self. <clears throat> and now people probably be thinking well John that was more like a poem and I'm like yeah it also kind of sounded like a rap and unfortunately I don't even think that's unfortunate sometimes I mix my philosophy and my rhymes together you know sometimes I read things with a flow but that just comes from trying to be a rapper for eight years 
I do have a couple songs on all the streaming platforms. If you look me up, it's under John Cerrone. They're not that good, but you can give it a listen if you want. So if you enjoyed what I just wrote there, I don't think any of the things in the book that I'm publishing right now are going to rhyme as much as that, but they are going to be that insightful or that inspiring, I should say. You know, so if you really want to... Shit, man, just buy the book when it comes out. I'll keep you all posted. If some things don't understand, obviously just hit me up or send me messages. I'm just like, shit, I got to get this going, man. Also because I'd really like to start working on the second book, and that's going to be like a very, that's going to be more clear-cut and less subjective. That's actually like a step-by-step, like self-help book um, that I would like to get traditionally published. Now, the thing that I'm more excited about the second book is it's going to be a lot easier for people to grasp, obviously. Uh, the first book that I'm putting out is... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm literally... <sighs> what did I just eat? I ate sushi at like 9.30 at night. I was like, I'm not fucking cooking. I'm going to Jewel. I got myself some sushi. And now I'm drinking coffee. People are like, it's fucking gross. And I'm like, I know I'm fucking gross, but I had to do it. I didn't want to cook. I fucking bawled for three and a half hours, and then I tried to come home and be productive. I'm like, fuck me, it's Monday, you know? <clears throat> but anyway, I think the second book is going to be a lot easier for people to grab hold of because it's tangible. It's also like, like I have some real-life stories to put into it or, like, my system. Because the first book is, like, not really a system and there's not a lot of like my personal experience in it it's mostly just like my thoughts on the matter right the nice thing about the second book is it's like I really like shed more layers for people to see it's like how I went through it how I got rid of a lot of my bad habits and how I replaced them with good habits which is why I call it the hierarchy of habits I went through these phases of using less destructive habits to get rid of the ones that were really fucking me up. And then when I had the more easily manageable vices left, then I started switching those out for more positive ones. Because, I mean, if you listened on the podcast, I had Joey on there. Joey also talked about um, his keto journey and how... Like, he just focused on the diet. Uh, He didn't focus on working out and the diet at the same time. He did one after the other, and and it worked for him, you know. He did, like, nine months of hardcore keto, lost a bunch of weight, and then he started working out on top of it. And kid did a complete 180. He's probably the healthiest I've ever seen a kid. And, like, he's definitely in, like, the percentile of, like, healthy people on this planet i'd say which is really good for him um but it's just a a a topic that i'd like to talk about on here obviously push it and obviously with the book it's like damn y'all can't like get rid of every single bad habit at the same damn time it's just not possible you know it's fucked up i mean especially like with me because i had like oh so many fucking bad habits it was fucked it was like the two I had to get rid of right off the bat was the cocaine and the alcohol. I'm like, okay, these two are so bad. These are these two are definitely like going to kill me, right? For sure. So they had to go, right? And at the time I'm still like vaping, right? So I got nicotine. I'm still smoking weed. I'm playing video games, I'm watching TV, and through all of this too, like, I'm still, like, working, right, so it's not like I didn't have a job, you know, because as many bad habits as I had, like, I always worked, right, because I needed money for the bad habits, right, so, so I figured I needed to get rid of those two things first, Um, and in order to do that, the first month that I had to get off the alcohol and the cocaine, I was like, I'm I'm just going to smoke weed for this month, you know, I'm... I can't, I can't take down all three of those, right? So I gave myself some slack. I'm like, you know what? We'll do a month smoking weed, and then we'll get rid of the weed. And I did. Um, because honestly, out of everything I've done, 
And it's fucking crazy because, like, my parents were so ridiculous about smoking weed. And, God, just, like, their generation, too. And, I mean, mostly it's just the conservative side of the generation. Like, because they let the war on drugs get in their head and, like, pot super bad. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck, alcohol is so bad. So bad. I don't think anyone knows, like, would you ever compare, like, the withdrawals from, like, not smoking weed to, like, alcohol? No, you wouldn't. Because the withdrawals from alcohol can fucking kill you. It will fucking kill you. Those are the worst two weeks of my life, really. I swear to God. I was sweating, shaking. I wasn't vomiting, but I was dry heaving all over the place. Shit, I wasn't really eating either. I was literally dying for, like, two weeks, crying, crying. I had to change my sheets like every night because I just sweat through them. It was just a big bummer, you know. And then when I got off of weed, I used the weed for a month to get off those two things. I stopped smoking the weed. Nothing happened. I was like, shit. Well, this is all right. And I guess I'm not like super lazy anymore. I wouldn't even consider the two like comparable like alcohol and weed. I'd rather have people smoking smoking weed than alcohol. But I also got a bone to pick with weed just because of... It just kills motivation. I don't do it now. I don't think I'll ever go back to weed or alcohol or any shit. I, I'm not going to go back to anything. The only thing that I would ever go back to, and I keep saying this to um, my girlfriend and my loved ones, like, damn, I just love tobacco so much. Not the e-cigs, like the nicotine, but, man, if there's one thing, like, that's just meant a lot to me over the course of my life, it's definitely, like, cigarettes. And I got two years of no nicotine right now, and I'm feeling great, you know? The only thing that's really holding me back from fucking smoking nicotine is the fact that I know it's going to affect my basketball playing. That's literally it. So I'm like, fuck, I just got to keep this going, you know? So once I got rid of the weed, I had, obviously, like, I was playing a lot of video games, right? <clears throat> one video game specifically is called League of Legends. It was very competitive, or I played it competitively. Um, it was very addictive. So I used the weed to get off the cocaine and the alcohol. Then I used the nicotine, the video games, to get off of um, the weed. And... When I started this sober journey of changing myself, this also was around May. It was May 25th. That's my, like, sober anniversary, which is also nearing prom season for my family's tux place. And I'm also doing the bookkeeping. Man, I started this sober journey, and I'm working 50, 55 hours a week. Like, I'm like, I just literally have to take all of my free time and like put it into something I might as well be making money that way the free time that I have when I get home at night I can like just play video games so I don't have to think about how much I want to like drink right so got rid of the cocaine got rid of the alcohol got rid of the weed and for a year I really just focused on and I say like the cocaine and the alcohol but like you we can also like group together all the hard substances under those two. So it was like, okay, like there's no ecstasy, there's no there's no acid, there's no ketamine, there's no other like rave culture drugs, like there's no yeah, that's it, you know. And then like obviously like weed was in its own category. But um as you can see, like I just focused on being completely sober. I still use the nicotine and the video games and watching anime obviously I was also working a job and I just focused on that for a year um, after six months of doing that though I got readmitted into a, a college University of Illinois Springfield I'm like I'm gonna finish this fucking degree you know because I you know in the back of my head I was like shit no one's really gonna take me seriously if I don't have a degree and people who are listening to this podcast like yeah you can name like a couple like you can actually you can name a lot of successful people that didn't get a degree ceos whatever millionaires billionaires all that shit blah 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 all right that's great i'm talking about like seriously in the sense of 
Can you imagine somebody running for president and not having a bachelor's degree? Do you think that person would get elected? I highly fucking doubt it. And people on people listening to this would be like, you don't even have a master's, dude. Like, you just have a bachelor's. Like, a lot of these guys have accomplished way more shit. Like, now that I'm thinking about this, actually, you know what? I'm literally sitting in front of my computer right now. Let's see if Donald Trump actually... Donald Trump... Does Donald Trump have a college degree? Wow, that already auto-populated. Look at that. Yeah, it looks like he does. All right, so yeah, he, he does have a college degree. Yeah, can you imagine if somebody, like, ran for president and didn't have a college degree? So, like, in the back of my head, I'm like, I got to finish this. I'm also, like, two years away. I got to just finish it, you know? I had spent all that time, like, studying biochemistry, chemistry, and philosophy at Grand Valley State. Like, I was so close to finishing one of the degrees <clears throat> that I got to just do it. I also, like, did it because I felt that out of everything, like, that I'd studied in school, me learning to write philosophical papers and to read philosophy had, like, made me such a better writer. And not even just, like, a philosophy writer or an educational writer but just the words that I read like help with my rhyming like I was rhyming different things or talking about different things because like you know I still I still like love to rap you know I'm still freestyling in the car all that shit I'm just like not producing anymore it's just so much fucking work everything's so much fucking work and I gotta just pick one thing to do and do it really well so that's just gonna be me being an author and podcaster for now Hey, if you know somebody that wants to produce beats and just get me on a couple of tracks, like, fuck it, hit me up. Like, I'm always down for some shit like that. But I'm tired of doing everything by myself. I need, like, some people that are going to help me get there, you know. But for now, we're going to focus on spreading love through words and creating a platform for people to come to and chase their dreams, right? Back to the story, though. So after I had got readmitted back into college, I'm still, like, using nicotine and and video games and it was such a love hate relationship with that video game League of Legends. I'm actually like 9 months. No, I'm a year almost a year off of it right now. I gave up League of Legends a year ago because just like everything that I was using it, it was such a competitive game and I I just love being competitive. I didn't know where to put my competitive nature into, you know, even with basketball, it's like I had such a drive that I needed to like challenge myself and school was never like challenging enough, you know, and then there was basketball too. And the energy that I wanted to put into writing and rapping, I wanted that challenge, but you know, my heart just wasn't there with it. So my free time went to the video game. And I also, like, used the video game to get off of the worst habits. So, like, I was already, like, very, very connected to that. So after a year of getting off of all the shit that ruined me, I'm like, I'm going to get rid of the nicotine, right? And that was, that was tough because I had been doing that for 12 years. And I'm like, fuck, I fucking love nicotine. God damn. I'm just like waiting for the day that we have such like a good understanding of stem cells to the point where they can grow me a fucking lung. I already told Lisa like when they start growing like body parts like I'm buying a pack of cigarettes. No one's going to stop me. It's fucking over, you know, which is why I'd like to bring the society species into a new age of science but that is definitely a topic for another <clears throat> another podcast because you know there's no one here to have a discussion with and shit I'm, I'm really not going to do those views on this one right now anyway back to the back to the program so after a year I finally got rid of nicotine after smoking it for 12 years so I had given up alcohol hard drugs marijuana and nicotine all within the span of a year, actually trying, okay? There's a little disclaimer here I, I you know, kind of left out. It is in the book, though. Um, people are asking, probably, did he do this all himself? And the answer is no. It's not possible. You can't really 
man, you can't really do something that big by yourself. I don't think there's really anything in the world that you can really do like that yourself. You know, people could say, yeah, it was, it was all me, 100%. Like, yeah, but no, you know. So for me, obviously I have a good support group. You know, a lot of people that stayed with me through the worst of my shit, um, they're very supportive of my creativeness. They're really supportive of my drive and ambition. But <clears throat> not a lot of people, like friends and family, have always been like, at the beginning, they weren't really supportive of the sobriety thing. They were like, they kind of were like, well, I mean, if you want to, but, you know, it, like in the back of their head, they like think, well, you don't really have to, you know, I think you're doing all right, you know. And like even today, like some people still are like, you know, you you can do stuff. And I'm like, no, I, I fucking can't. You know, I don't think people understand that. I don't blame them for not understanding that, though, you know. Because I, I wouldn't even, like, want to wish that on, like, my worst enemy. But anyway, they're very supportive of my creativity and, and my ambition. And also, once I got the ball rolling with the sobriety and, like, good things started happening, like me as a person changed everyone's like very supportive of it now i don't think anyone would ever not want me to be what i am right now because like it's only yeah like i'm i'm about to blossom it's fucking nuts i'm feeling it i feel it i planted this seed like 10 years 12 years ago i've been even though i went like a couple man shit i went a long time like without watering it i've been watering it for three years now i'm about to blossom motherfucker it's gonna be pretty out here you know but yeah so people were very supportive but also i i got a new therapist so i went two years without having a therapist i had a therapist between the ages of 16 and 22 and he helped me through a lot of things but there were some things that <clears throat> he couldn't really he couldn't really help me with and I don't I don't really blame him. He was a family therapist. He he wasn't really a, an addiction therapist. And I think I really lucked out in finding somebody. I I got referred by a friend. Um she told me he's not really a traditional like therapist. Like he is, you know, he's got his own practice, but he's way more down to earth and I'm like sick. And then she goes, "Yeah, and he's he's sober too." And I'm like, "Oh, that's fucking awesome." So I found somebody who is 27 years sober himself, like worked the program and all that. Even though I don't, I don't work the program. I never did work the program. Like I, I mean, like NA or AA. That wasn't really my jam, you know. But to find somebody who has some insight into that, you know, like I was trying to say, it's it's not all, it's not all you, you know. You can't do everything yourself. So I had to. It was funny how that happened, too, because I had asked her, because I remember her mentioning it, and she told me, yeah, you can hit him up, and I went to a free consultation three weeks into being off of alcohol and cocaine. And it was a great meeting. It was great. I told him I'm sick of, sick of hating myself, man. I'm sick of this shit. Um, I can't learn to moderate those things. I just can't. I've been trying for so many years to try and be like everybody else, just to try and control myself. I just can't. Like, I have so much energy that I, I live life to such an extreme that any moment I get myself on an ingestible substance or a psychoactive material, like, I'll literally, like, it, it's it's unheard of. Like, it's it's a catalyst. I can't handle it, you know? it's that's just it i i was sick of trying to figure out a way how to use these things and still retain my humanity and he understood that and he told me you know this is all great john but the only way that i'm gonna help you is if you you don't drink or you don't do drugs he told me for the start, he goes, you know, what? We'll, we'll get to the weed, you know, but the other thing is you got to get rid of the, the hard stuff. And I'm like, I'm already three weeks into it. He goes, yeah, but like, you got to be done with it for good. And I'm like, and it kind of like clicked in my mind there when he said it too. And I'm like, shit, I'm like really fucking done with this stuff. And, you know, it was scary at first, but I'm like, you know what? 
let's let's fucking send it. If my life ain't better in a year, then I'll probably just go back to drinking again. And it wasn't even close. I gave it everything up for a year and my life completely turned around. Just my whole like outlook, my my health, like it's not even it ain't even a fucking joke when you start actually caring about your health and your life and your dreams, man. It's fucking crazy. So I accomplished all this shit in a year, um, giving everything up, and then, you know, I finally, like, felt confident enough to, like, put myself out there and, like, kind of find somebody that, find somebody to love and date, and, you know, I was blessed with somebody who's, I can't even describe how unbelievably supportive she is of everything. It's just fucking lit. So, and that was a year into putting all this work in. We've actually been dating for uh, a little over a year and a half now. Maybe like 18 months. Oh, shit. It's like 20 months, yo. Yeah, it's 20 months. So, we're almost at two years. She's actually moving in next week. I, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be. But like I was saying... You can't do everything yourself. Fuck, you can't do everything yourself. And for so long, I like, you know, I had this stigma in my head of like, I got to do it, you know, for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's pride. It's definitely pride. It's the ego, you know, and that's, man, there's a healthy amount of pride, you know. There's a healthy amount of everything, but fuck, realizing that you're not alone is such a humbling thing. It's fucking crazy. And all this work that I've done, shit. So any back to the story. I've given up all these things. She we she actually started coming over. We started hanging out a month into me getting off of nicotine. And she thought it was she couldn't even tell. And I told her I'm like, yeah, I was like literally getting off of nicotine that time. So I I'm shocked you didn't like notice anything cuz I'm a I'm I'm a pretty weird guy. All right, in person too, like, y'all might hear me on here. And maybe the people that are, like, obviously, like, my close friends hear me talking, they're like, oh, no, he's he's pretty fucking weird. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, but she didn't notice. She did notice that I kept talking about candy because I swear to God, for the first month of getting off of nicotine, I would just be driving to the gas station at, like, 11 o'clock, 11.30. I would do good all day, not having a craving, no nicotine, and 11 o'clock would come around, and I'm like, I'm literally going to go smash like six Reese's cups and a bunch of Skittles right now. Like I just need fucking something. I need it right fucking now. And I would do that for like three or four weeks. I don't really have, okay. Like I'm just like everyone else. I got a sweet tooth, right? But I actually psych myself out and tell people at parties like yeah i don't really like cake i don't really like that stuff and they go oh really and internally i'm like no i fucking love it i just say out loud i don't really like that stuff so i don't go devour the entire dessert table you know so she thought it was funny that i was just like obsessed with candy and shit for a month and then it just stopped so it took me a month to get off the the nicotine cravings like that um still playing the video games obviously and then a year after that, I had finally given up playing League of Legends around the same time that I graduated from the University of Illinois in Springfield with my bachelor's in philosophy. So it took me nine years to get my fucking bachelor's degree after switching my major. <sighs> One, two, three, four times. Four fucking times. Switched it between fucking chemistry, biology, psychology, philosophy, and accounting. So I had five majors at one time. Um, luckily, I finished the minor in philosophy while I was double majoring in chemistry and biology at Grand Valley State. So I had a year and a half left of double majoring, and I would have had a, a double bachelor's degree in... Uh, chemistry and biology, but I finished the minor in philosophy, so that's why um, I went back and finished finished that. I was still working full time, so I got rid of the video games, and then 
just recently. So now this is this is a big one. And for anyone out here is listening, this is this is some real shit I'm about to say. Um, and it was gonna come up regardless on one of the podcasts, but I'm currently like three months without porn. And people can think, they're like, well, that's fucking weird, or why are you doing that? And to any of the guys out there, it's mostly the men, because sometimes the women hear that and they're like, well, what's the big deal? And to the men, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm fucking talking about. And you know that shit's destructive. You know it's fucked up. And you know we've been doing it from such a young age that it completely twists our perception of reality and what we think love and sex is. It's fucked up, okay? And it had been driving me nuts. So three months ago, I finally got rid of that shit. It's been fucking brutal. So I've just been, like, getting rid of all of these things that I, like, latched onto to try and cope with this reality. And slowly but surely, I started instilling, like, healthier habits. So as you can see... There was a hierarchy to my habits, the negative ones, that I used the more manageable, or I should say, more manageable. Is that that like a good way to describe it? I don't really know. Um, And I don't even know about easier to quit because like, uh, I'll be honest, like quitting porn was probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do. For sure. And quitting nicotine was. I think like quitting alcohol and and cocaine was easier than nicotine and porn because like cocaine and alcohol was like so bad for me. It was like, listen, I'm literally dying right now. Like I'm literally waking up in a pile of vomit in my in my apartment. Like I'm decrepit. I feel like fucking death, right? Like the nicotine and the porn, it's like you don't really feel that bad. You know, you might have like some shame. (laughs) Yeah, you definitely have some fucking shame and guilt. But it's not like so bad to the point like that it's completely destroying my fucking life, right? So obviously there's levels to to the seriousness of your habits. But I I used all of the – I used all of the the, – like I, I still don't know like and I'm writing a book on this shit I gotta fucking figure I gotta figure out how I'm gonna like start describing these I think I like started writing I was gonna call them like vital values you know like wh- like between like time money health and there was another one you can base these habits on their level of importance in your life you know so obviously the the two the cocaine and the alcohol and the other hard drugs, those were, like, so debilitating or so destructive towards the vital values that they had to go compared to the other ones that are just, like, not as vital but still vital enough that you want to get rid of them, right? And then you got to find your hierarchy to start reintroducing um, healthy habits, right? So during, like, the months that I was getting off of all of the nasty shit, I wasn't writing a lot. I couldn't write. Like, I couldn't even put the pen on the paper. I was so... And even, like, leading up to that change, I swear, like, that last year before I, like, got sober, man, I couldn't fucking write. I couldn't fucking write, and it pissed me off. I was like, I am so sick of writing depressing-ass shit. I am so sick of writing about how I'm going to change and then not fucking change. And I'm like, I have to fix this. Because if I was literally going to attribute my creativity to me getting fucked up, then I didn't even want to be, I didn't even want to be alive anymore. I'm like, if this, if I have to get fucked up to be creative, then I don't want to be alive anymore. Because that's bullshit. Because I know I should fucking love life enough to be creative without this shit, right? And that, that's really what spurred me to, that's really what spurred me to change. It wasn't because I was fucking dying. It was because like, damn, I just want to enjoy life again. Like, fuck, I want to enjoy life, right? So I had to start introducing healthier habits. And it was shaky at first because I didn't want to write. And that's, like, one of my favorite things to do is to write. Write my thoughts, whether it's poetry, um, shit, writing some raps, writing philosophy, just writing, fucking love writing, you know? I couldn't do that at the beginning. Um, I couldn't even really work out a lot that's another healthy habit i had to change my diet i had to stop i was literally eating like (laughs) 
fucking seven to eight burritos a week, like at the tail end of my alcoholism. I lived on burritos and fucking whiskey, and it's fucking disgusting. So I had to change my diet, you know, start eating whole foods again. Not whole foods the place, but, you know, actual whole foods like fruits, veggies, and, and meat, not like processed shit. So I had to change my diet, right? That was the first thing that had to be introduced. Um, while I was still playing the video games, it was it was kind of hard to, like, reintroduce myself to reading. That didn't happen until a year into the sobriety. I reintroduced reading into the mix. Um, then the writing started to flow again. Um, in the last four months, I've been playing a lot of guitar. That's how I wake up. I wake up and I play a half-hour guitar. Uh, I haven't been playing my whole life. I think I got my guitar seven years ago. I learned like a couple chords. The last three to four months, I've been really taking the time to learn it. So I got that hobby. Um, still, I still like to glove, um, like gloving, like lights and spin poi. Um, I still like doing those things. Play a lot of basketball. Really got a good workout routine. Um, like I said, the reading thing's really cool and the writing thing's really cool. So I've got like this revolver of like healthy habits that I really like getting to. And honestly, I am going to say this for anyone listening. I do have video games thrown in the mix here. So I have a lot of retro games like Game Boy or, or, or Wii and GameCube games. I play a lot of Pokemon and other turn-based strategy video games. I don't really have a, an issue with being addicted to them. Because I go through like a week or two phase where I like pick one of them up. I play the fuck out of it just to like give me a break from being so damn productive all the time. Like sometimes I just like starting a new Pokemon game and playing fucking Pokemon. Or I like playing Fire Emblem, which is like a turn-based strategy game, kind of like chess. Or I like playing Harvest Moon, you know, just a chill farming simulator. And I like doing that to like reset. Um for two weeks and then I like put it down you know I haven't played like I'll go like two or three months without playing a video game and then I'll like go hard for two weeks you know so I don't really view those video games as bad I don't binge watch anime anymore like I used to um so slowly but surely as you start getting rid of the bad habits you had reintroducing healthier ones you start to notice your life changing like what you really Damn, man, like, what's really fucking important to you, you know? Like, like, fuck. Life's so much better than we fucking make it out to be. I, on, I swear to God, I'm so sick of looking at my phone. I hate that. I hate that fucking phone. I don't care if it's like, oh, what about a text from your mother or like, pictures of your loved ones and it's like you know what? I can I can experience those people in real time like if you're literally gonna say like my phone is so important that I only get to experience my loved ones through my phone or that's the only positive about it then you're you're literally not even facing the negatives of it I hate it I I swear to god anyone who's listening if you're not trying to start your own business get rid of social media that's it that's all I have to say to you. People will be like, oh, I'm on there for the memes or, oh, I just like seeing my, like, family members' photos. Start a Google Drive. Start start a Google Photos. Start, like, shared with, with the photos. I don't care. Fuck social media. Fuck it. I fu- I'm not even going to drop names of the big ones because once I get this podcast really fucking big, I'm just going to rip on all of them. Oh, my God. I can't stand social media. Literally just trying to sell sell they're literally trying to sell us life or what we or what they think life should be fuck that fuck them fuck fuck all of these things fuck the news outlets fuck social media fuck the government i wasn't supposed to say that yet but i did it anyway because it's a free fucking country and if they got a problem, you can't fucking see that. Well, I'm I'm here to help change it. I'm not just going to say, I'm not just like some hippie, you know, that's just like, yeah, fuck the government. All right, what are we going to do to change it? Like, man, when I was spending a lot of time around, like, hippies at, like, music festivals and stuff, they had, like, they had this, like, hate 
towards the government. I don't blame them, okay? Or they just had hate towards institutions. And I don't blame them because I have that too. But they were they were dead ends. There was no answers. There was no solutions. There was no how can we make this better? I don't know. I'm just it's fucking bad here, man. I'm just going to fucking whatever, dude. Like that's not me. That's not what I'm here to do. Like I'm here to spur change. I want to give people hope said it a million times i'm probably gonna have to say it a million times on this fucking podcast how i just want people to live the best fucking life they can live yeah totally me included myself included so it's not just about everyone else it's also about me you know because i have to keep myself in check sometimes i get down like i came on here at the start of the podcast i'm like today fucking sucked monday fucking sucked and I got to remember that I'm not really doing all of this just for everyone. I'm kind of doing this for me, too, you know. Sometimes, like, yeah, you know, you wear your heart on your sleeve. You want to work so hard for people that you love that you forget that you got to do it because you love yourself, too. It's like, fuck, man. We just got to keep reminding ourselves how fucking awesome we are. I don't know how many times I'm going to say the F word today, but if you got a problem with it, drop a comment, share it, tell your grandma about it. It's feel free, baby, motherfucker. I'm out here. I'm just L-I-V-I-N, apostrophe at the end, straight living out here. You got a goddamn problem with that, you can take it up with me. Yours truly, truthfully speaking, I'm far reaching. I got the drip on lock right now. Ain't nobody going to stop me. I'm not going to learn another language just so I can tell you that they ain't ready for me because they still ain't ready for me. <clears throat> yeah, it was supposed to be like my ending spiel, but I don't really know. Is that supposed to be the end of this? I've been here for a minute. I think I did an hour podcast by myself. I've just kind of been talking here. I feel like I'm finally getting going, though, so that's nice. Um, I don't really have an outline for what we talked about. I did talk about some of the other things today um, that I wanted the podcast to be about other than just chasing your dreams and bringing on guests who want to talk about um, wellness and, and well-being. Like, that's also there. I've also got an agenda that I'm trying to push um, other than the book, and that's John Cerrone for president. Um, we're thinking 2032, folks. That's 10 years. If If I have to run in 2028, I will do it. I will do it. If I have to, like if things get so bad here that they're like that, like people that know me, like, do you really got to fucking do this? I'm like, oh, fuck. Really? Like, I kind of wanted to chill for four more years before I just fucking let it rip. I'm letting it rip right now, though. So hopefully they're ready for that. So there was my agenda of running for president. Um, my my disdain for social media. There's also uh, what's going to happen in the second book I'm writing, um, the step-by-step self-help book. And yeah, we actually like talked a lot about like my life. We didn't even really get into like most of the downfall that happened. Shit, bro. Like we were literally just talking about like what happened three years ago that spurred me to change um, in those thoughts surrounding it, the habits and the methodicalness of it. Like, damn, I'll, I'll be honest with you, people that are listening, like, there's a whole can of worms for my life between the ages of 19 and 21. Those three years was absolute mayhem, and it wasn't even the alcohol. I don't even think I drank any alcohol in those three years. It was mostly just ecstasy, Adderall, and a lot of rave drugs, tryptamines, research chemicals, all that shit. And I had completely lost my marbles, but that's for another podcast. Um, it is crazy. Actually, before we leave, I'll tell you this. So that instance in my life, those three years, I was very addicted to harder substances and drugs, right? Then I, I got sober for six months, changed my life around for the better, and then I got readmitted back into Grand Valley after being dismissed. And I went back there the second time, and I got on the dean's list. I was fucking killing it. You know, it was chemistry and biology and all that shit. Um, but I started drinking occasionally, and it wasn't bad at the start. It was occasionally, right? 
And then three years later, I developed into a full-blown alcoholic. So I had two instances of losing my marbles, right? And everything had just finally, finally built up into me taking that step three years ago to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm totally going to change my life for the better. And it was brutal, but I'm here to tell you that you can fucking do it. Even if you don't have something that's so detrimental, like a life or death situation, or maybe you're not like super out of shape, you know, but you want to make some changes. Maybe you're really out of shape. Maybe you want to start a business. You don't know where to start. Maybe you want to put your phone down more. Maybe you want to watch less TV. Maybe you want to like get out there and experience life, make new friends. All of these things you can do you you should want to do and i'm here to tell you that you can do it but you can't do everything from your couch or your bed no that's not where we should be headed as a species we have two legs we can use them so get out there if you're gonna go for a walk go for a walk Shit, I don't even know when I'm dropping this. It's fucking 1040 at night. I don't care if you go for a walk at night. It's actually pretty nice out here in the Midwest. But damn, if you're listening to this, figure out something to do to make your day a lot better. I don't care what it is, but damn. Y'all just have a really good day. I really appreciate y'all tuning in. And until next time, peace.